are the two big heroes, if they have a good early start or if they don't get dealt with, could win the team the game oh. from the get-go. Music to my ears and just a delight for the eyes. Dota happening live. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Game three, IG versus Secret. Let's run through our lineups. We'll begin this time, it looks like, with Invictus Gaming on the dire side. We started off with Chuan playing the Witch Doctor. For now, burning, as you mentioned in the last game before the remake, on the Queen of Pain, a bit of a changeup for him, and it'll be Luo uh, playing a hero that's pretty common for him, or at least used to be on the Broodmother. Rounding things off, this will be the changeup. 4.30 will take the Brew, and it looks like he's going solo mid. Interesting, on the Radiant side, they have no detection. Against a Brood, and with that in mind, you're almost definitely the plan for Secret is to have the Axe versus the Brood. If you're not buying Detection, you've got to have an answer from in lane, and that only comes in the form of Axe. And speaking of that team, let's introduce them now. It's Team Secret. They took game one, they struggled a bit in two, and looking to make it a 2-1 advantage. We've got Zai on the Axe. We saw this a lot at DAC. Arteezy, very fresh and new for him. He's going to be on that Pugna, Kuroki, the Undying. Uh -huh. S4 on the Viper, everyone being <laughs> slowed down by a very trolly He's just showing off. Warlock. And then to finish things off, we've got Puppy, who will be on his signature hero, the Imagine. Enchantress. If you had like five heroes or four heroes run in while Faith just channeled that from the other side, that could have been some next level plays coming out from Faith. But yeah, so I love the animation, like little hands like coming out of the ground, grabbing at your legs, slowing you down from the, the Warlock. You know, I feel like we haven't seen this Warlock since AUI 2000 stopped playing it as a support for Cloud9. It looks to be a Faith special. He is decked out in cosmetics, has an immortal staff, has a mythical demon. He is pimped out on this Warlock, and while he finds Puppy here in the jungle, this is useful information for IG more than anything. Even though Puppy will come in, get a creep, at this point Puppy's not getting XP, neither's the Warlock, and Warlock will just have to run around from the center, look to not take too much damage or get picked off. Yeah, so we are going to see that Pugna Tron up top. actually has boots here. This is really dangerous for Puppy. Oh, at the same time, though, there's a two-hero yeah. party in the woods, and four supports just roaming around. Gods, as we see the lanes kind of settle, it looks like Puppy and Kuro may both head towards top. For now, Kuro trying to decide. This is starting to look a little bit like that old DTS style of drafting way back in Dota 1, where they pioneered the aggressive tri-lane with the Enchantress Chen picks, often played by art style back then. And they would just really try to apply pressure early. But IG, they were around back then, and, and they know how to counter this, yeah. which is just get in their faces, don't let them sit in your jungle, and do not let them group up. At least for now, doing a pretty good job at keeping the creeps back. Yeah, I love the reference. And right now, yeah, Secret, yeah, both well, both the Dire supports kept busy, but at the same time, it's the Secret supports kept busy on the Radiant side. Kuro as well as Puppy not getting any XP, any farm. One center chasing each of the IG supports, but it's an even trade-off here. And the other big problem for Secret is they don't have detection for Brood in the lane. They've got the Pugna Nether Blast, which is decent against Brood for now, but at some point, a support rotation coming in and Arteezy could get caught out and potentially punished as he's very vulnerable in this solo offlane position. They basically have to keep the pressure up. If they stop for a second, and it's something IG spots out, they can go in with the Witch Doctor, the Brood can start to run RTZ down, and the only thing that will save him at that point is a TP, which I want to point out, he's already grabbed one, knowing that he may need to just TP away once the cask has been used and finished bouncing to secure his retreat. So four level one support still, and I'm trying, I feel like that slightly favors Secret. I think their support's just a little bit better at level one. You've got Decay as well as Enchantress who can gank regardless of level, but uh, on the IG side, I mean, cask amazing at level one. Warlock wants some XP, and that's where he's actually going to kind of look to go leech a bit of top lane. Very slow, cerebral game, and by that I mean we've got four level one support Scott. That is not lane. what you expect early. Zion burning, duking it out a bit. For now, burning, starting to pull ahead in that fight, may even continue the chase. There's no backup here. He's going to force that TP out, and Zai going to really have a tough time in the lane after that. Is going to have to walk back to lane. Burning should get at least a wave or two of extra experience. And good news for Zai, though, the lane was pushing a bit, so he doesn't suffer for that much. Yeah, and this is where the lane decision from IG is fantastic. They even dropped the web at that bottom rune at level one to catch Secret out by surprise. So they've got a laning stage advantage off this. They're going to go in top lane on Kuro with the cast. They don't get the bounce back onto Kuro, but uh -oh. it may not matter. He's trapped in the side anyways. Lou doesn't need another nuke because Kuro, surrounded, looking to juke, has a couple of tankos to escape, but the right click damage, too much. First blood goes Lou's way. Meanwhile, mid though, they try to make a move on 430, but the centaur stomp doesn't connect. Puppy trying to find those early kills and unable to do so. And 
for the Undying there, Kuroki was level 2, but he did not skill anything else. I, I don't know if the Tombstone or potentially a Soul Rip would have saved him there, but he just, he didn't even bother. He's like, I'm dead. Oh, well. What well. can you do? Yeah, and he, they, they, what they're going to do is swap the lanes up, send Zai top against the Brood. At this point, though, Brood already level 5 with a good start. Can rotate into the jungle with the spider legs. Instead, says, nah, I'm just going to TP bottom. No, oh, Burning and Arteezy now looking to engage, and immediately Luo rotates. Burning does not want to have to face this matchup, it seems. And Luo just walks in, starts hitting the Nether Ward. That's really not much the Pugna can do to punish that, because even if you harass him, he just heals right back up. Zai engaging top, though, gets off a call. He needs a lot of spins here to get this kill. And instead, he has to TP <laughs> away immediately. Musical oh, lanes. that's unfortunate. Not what Zai was really hoping for, and it really has been musical lanes. Brood goes bottom, Queen of Pain back to top, the Axe swapping around, the Undying moving now. We've seen the Enchantress ganking early. Hell, the only two heroes that really haven't moved so far are, are the Brood, the Brew as well as the Viper mid. Yeah. I feel like this is more to IG's tempo, though. They're the ones who are kind of deciding who's rotating where. Like, they'll rotate first and constantly secret have to react, and all this kind of just swapping around has kind of prevented Puppy's Enchantress from really doing anything in the early game. Oh, Arteezy is doing some work here bottom, though. The Decrep comes out to call, barely missing Zai. Would have been a kill almost certainly if he got it off, but... That web move speed making the difference. Gods, though, I'm looking at the Pugna right now, and he seems to be the X Factor leader in CS. Did well top, even against some early pressure. He took the top tower down a few slots, and now he's looking to do the same bottom as Arteezy will bring this tower down well below half HP, around a quarter or even a fifth remaining. Now, that's see. two towers that have just been brutalized early game. And Burning, not he, he's got his bottled out now, so he's going to probably chew through all these charges, and I think he needs to pick up a TP if they want to defend or fight bottom lane, and that may well be the game plan for IG. You've got this Queen of Pain, level 6, Can't ready to go. Can't let Pugna start getting momentum. Luo tries to bait them back and ju jukes around a bit. They do have three heroes in position, but there's no Brewmaster Blink Dagger. There's no Warlock Ultimate. This is the time for Seekers to apply pressure. The Analyst talked about it. We're seeing it now. Out comes the Maledict. A beautiful cast, though. Our Arteezy could be in danger, he gets nuked once by the Brood, and then the follow-up comes from auto-attacks, they get the kill, and look at the upheaval, they can't even get near anyone! Lo looking to engage further as Lowe gets off an auto-attack here or there, does he's he have mana for a spawn? Spider leads, he does! Finds Puppy as well! Nice turn of events for IG, they hold the tower, and I think more importantly, guys, they kill the Pugna, but mid lane, meanwhile, Viper just uh, laying in, trying to make up for this a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, Viper winning the mid lane pretty heavily on CS, full he rotate down bottom in case it was needed, which was a good move, I think, because you don't really know how that fight's going to go if it wasn't for that amazing Witch Doctor cast Maledict. And that was a two points in Maledict. That's what really caught Arteezy by surprise. He was not expecting that much damage output following up the, following up the stun, and that really caught him by surprise. Secret trying to showcase this new style for the second time in three games. You look back at DHC and when Seeker was having their most success with this roster, and they were kind of playing a similar approach. They wouldn't end games as early necessarily as that game one gods, but they were always looking to get an early lead, and it seems IG has been reasonably ready for that type of early game aggression since game one. Game two, they looked really solid, and for now, able to hold the line, not yet not giving up a tower, even though they've taken heavy damage on a couple. This tower's still alive. Yeah, that's what they land was kind of designed to, to do, it feels like, with the Enchantress Undying oh, Pugna. Oh, being pressured again. Out comes the upheaval. The cast bounced. Did it come back to him? No! He's able to just, just TP level away. One. That's the weakness of the level one cask at the same time. Nicely done. TP seemed to be his right secret weapon here. They just can't kill him. Yeah. He's sitting on 1,700 net worth, though. He's probably spent a good 500 gold on TPs this game. But look but. at this for IG. They have Bruce Blink, but they have no Blink. And do you want to use it now? Because if you use it and you don't... No, they're not even going to bother. Ooh, almost got the deny there. Nice attempt by Twine from the side. That's what Secret are looking for, though. If you don't want to use your Bruce Split, that's fine. We'll keep on pushing. Nether Ward doesn't have a long cooldown. Tombstone is pretty low as well. Compared to the Bruce Split, they can just keep on going. Burning doing what he can at the top lane and counter push, but Zai shows up and... But he's a Queen of Pain. He's just not the best. Puppy taking the double damage. Auto Tech's not dead yet, though. They slow down 430, and that's going to prompt the split. And now all Secret want to do is walk away. The Tombstone got dropped. That Zombies will help deal with some of the the Bruce split aspects, and I don't even think they get anyone here. Kuroki's fine. In fact, they may turn on Burning. Where's the backup for him? They keep on chasing. Will he make his way out? Arteezy trying to nuke him down. Can't do it as Puppy will fall on the Enchantress. But it's a Bruce split for simply an Enchantress. Not that great. Good news, though, is IG do get that tier one bottom.
little yeah. more momentum for Luo. And to me, he's going to be the key. More so than their team fight is just the split push of the brew, but he got oh. called by a call. Oh, there's the chop! Splits that spiderly down the middle. And away the Brood will go. A slight misstep from Brood Mama. And that's what happens. Mid lane, meanwhile. 430 comes in from the side, gets the club on Arteezy. There's no split to follow, but with a cast Maledict, Arteezy in trouble. Queen of Pain rocks up, and Arteezy not going to survive the Maledict. Does as much damage as he can. But IG, get one back. Took some heavy commitment from them, but that is a, a big kill. Just slowing down the push, killing off Arteezy again. What is our Pugna going to go for this game? Generally, he's the early mech carrier for a lot of his dra lineups, but it seems like maybe our has got a, even a Necrobook potentially in mind here. He just needs to tank up. And yeah, Necrobook possible, especially with the buffs to Necro 1 and 2. You can still actually push with ne low level Necrobooks. And, and it seems the Viper is going mech. So with that, probably yeah. the Necro 3 for Arteezy, it, the, the mech for the Viper, and then you just go, go, go. Yeah, the other option is you just tank up. And that's something where Arteezy is struggling to stay alive. Could just get some treads, a bracer, drums. If they want to five men and push early towers, those are the kind of items which really help. But Necrobook, if you can get to it, amazing now at level 1 and level 2. Well, Secret, ready for the next round of fighting. They know the Bruce splits on cooldown. They know 430 doesn't have a blink anyway. And, and the Queen of Pain ultimate. And that there's was... still no ultimate for the Warlock. You just keep on going. They really need the Axe Blink, I think, to give them that initiation for their pushes. And that's where they can not only maybe take towers, but get kills to kind of boost up their lead right now. Although it is actually IG uh -oh. with an early game lead. Well, Burning has found Puppy, but with no ult, can't get the kill. That's another tower about to drop in the top side of the map. And that Blink you mentioned, God's about to come out here for the Axe. Yeah. Took some time to do it and spent a lot of time off the map in the jungle making sure they can get to that point. But the secret team took multiple T1 towers, took an okay ish fight mid lane without the axe. So you throw the axe blink into the picture with a mech. This is where secret get really scary with their five man. What are your thoughts on the Warlock build this game? Fatal Bond's got, I believe, a bit of a buff in the latest patch, yep. but generally, historically, we've seen Warlocks mostly when they play support go for the upheaval max early. Do, do you like that build? Is there a situation where you want the Fatal Bonds first? What There's are your, too many what are your units for the Fatal Bonds. You've got like Enchanter's Creeps in the front lines. I, 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 it's nice, you can kind of guarantee you get it off with the long cast range, but this upheaval has been a huge tool and boost to IG's team fight and just pick up potential. It has been. One of the best spells that IG have had to fight here in the early game. Man, this Pugna Dota flashbacks to Pugna's TI4. Trouble. He may pay though, gets clapped. Arteezy kind of surrounded here, stunned and dead. It he does, almost took, took the cask over to S4 as well. That it was close. does force a large rotation of four heroes, but another death on a core. And this is going to give Luo a little extra breathing room bottom. Yeah. Luo, he's getting ridiculously fun. This is. If Brood's not like the top net worth at. 11, 12 minutes in. Oh, sorry. You're into He's trouble. trying to run him down now, but doesn't Did have get the time. Man. He just bought the dust, but it's in the stash. And yeah. Looks like they're going to get the tower. Was that the bottom tower? I think the yeah, spider two, two. just killed it off. Not denied by S4. Yeah. It's surprising he could get that. I think, I think the siege creep maybe threw him off a little bit, but yeah. Unfortunate. No, there's an initiation in the jungle. Zai able to find Luo, who lost off. his ultimate, though. He's healing through this, and I don't know if he can really go yeah. any further. He'll just back vicious. No follow-up. He was hoping there were spiderlings there as well. Yeah, then you get a bunch army. of spins, maybe. But yeah. Without that, no chance. So, so where does Secret go next? They've taken a tier two and a tier one top, the tier one mid. They're closing in on the Viper mech. Actually, I think he already completed it. We saw it earlier. And I mean, Pug is working a Necro book. Well, they're blinking in top lane. They want faith here. And he's got no tower. Yeah. No way. He drops the rock there. They nice pickoff for Secret. Secret go for pickoffs like that. They can't just straight five man push because on the IG side, Brewmaster has Blink Ultimate. You've uh -oh. got Queen of Pain with Sonic Wave. You've got the Warlock with Chaotic Offering. Uh -oh. Team fight for IG is insane. Oh, you've got trouble for S4 bottom. He's been trapped out a lot this series, and it looks like bottom lane, he may fall again. Does try to turn, but with the death ward committed, they'll get the kill. Secret bringing in reinforcements. They're gonna blast. Oh, look at the damage on Luo. Gets set by the ward as well as the soul ring getting popped. He loses over half his health, but there's just no follow-up. Nobody in position to counter gank. They really need the axe here. Now Arteezy's overextended a little bit. Unless he can get out of here, he's gonna go for the TP Chuan. Unable to corral him. Nice escape by Artor. He'll make his way out. Nice play from Burning. Kaida Arteezy away from the Nether Ward, because if Burning goes in, in range of the Nether Ward with the Sonic Wave, he just dies to the death to the uh, Pugna there, but got, was just out of range when he blinked in and managed to throw out his spells, but Arteezy with a nice little juke, and 
Kind of resets things a bit here. Putting the Sonic Wave on cooldown does help Secret a little bit. They ideally want to try find another pickoff from this and transition into uh, some of these outer towers. 430 is going to scout someone out. Meanwhile, in the dire jungle, Zai is revealed by Faith, but not going to make a go. Well, Secret's starting to cluster up mid a little bit. They may decide now is their time to strike. They've got an Alpha Wolf. The creep could be refreshed here, potentially re-enchanted by Puppy. No, he's going to let it die. Moves into the... Dire Woods going to look for another creep, and gods, it looks like they want to force out these big IG ults. Ideally back off after that and not die, but they're coming, and they're looking for the tier 2 mid. Yeah, this is a tricky one. And IG are going to fight it, though. Yeah. Smoke. No Sonic Wave, but Burning's still got a lot of good team fight. He's got a drums. He's going to go for a BKB first. He's really itemized so that he can fight early on. Well, the tower's already dead, and now a blink call comes out onto Burning, but there's no follow-up just yet. He's able to blink back and survive. Now the rock. That's on quite a few. Chuan going through with the Death Ward, and he's healing all the while as the Pug Ward expires. S4 drops low. Still surviving through this, but the Brew Split follows it up. Now onto Puppy. They just can't attack him, though. He's basically invincible to physical damage. Arteezy continuing to do work on the backlights, dealing with the Bruce Split. There's no backup for burning here, and the zombie apocalypse is rendering this Bruce Split all but useless towards the end, a two for one. But that is every big ultimate expended there. The Warlock ult, the Queen of Pain ult earlier, as well as the Bruce Split. But meanwhile, guess who's knocking yeah, on the funny. back door bottom lane? Oh, Axe gets a nice pick, a big pick up on Burning, but that was, I think, really well executed by IG. They get the T3 tower in the end at bottom. Luo not even needing to TP back to fight it. And it's something we talked about pretty early in the, the pause earlier was Brood, maybe even more so than these big teamfight ultimates, is the way to counter this five-man group up yep. and push. And that's where I feel maybe Zai made a bit of a mistake going back to game two, not going for a Necrobook. It feels like if Luo there has a Necrobook, he's got the money for a Necro 1 now. He can offer so much added pressure with his split push when you don't want a team fight into Secret. Zai looking for a bit more here. He's Zai been the big playmaker for Secret. And it feels like he has to be because he's really their only burst in lockdown with the, the call when potentially a big army of Spiderlings is there. Everyone else is very much like War of Attrition style heroes that can't easily start a fight and just get a clean kill. Let's see if Secret want to go again. They know those ults aren't cooldown gods, but oh, just constantly ratting it out in the bottom lane, cutting the wave, and it seems Secret are deciding now is our time. We know the ults aren't cooldown. We're going to force it here. Sure, we don't have that next wave of big items, but if we wait much longer, the Brew Split's going to be ready. The Rock's going to be online. They got about half a minute here as the Healing War, or uh, rather the Nether War, gets dropped, and in they go. Zai leaping forward, one to the call, but 430 quick on the blink back. Now the thing. siege begins, but with upheaval here, it's not an easy siege. Tombstone drop. Want the Pugna Ward. Burning's gonna try to focus That's the Pugna Ward. They get it. They still have to deal with the Tombstone, but that was really good. IG bait out the Axe Blink, and once Axe doesn't have Blink, they can just focus down the Pugna Ward. And look what's happening bottom. A little infestation as they jump forward. They find the call on Tron here. Zai looking for the quick solo dunk. He gets it too. Chop number one. He might be in a little bit far, though. Secret, not a whole lot of ways to support him. The Bruce Blink gets forced out. There's the soul rep keeping him alive they need a cyclone to come out they will onto the viper bkb purchased by the brood as the spider lanes continue to push in looks like brood's coming home to try and fight as they drop the upheaval chasing s4 out a bit he's very tanky this one has the mech and the stick charges won't be an easy kill 430 lunging forward again wants to isolate on the back lines but gets hit by another strike chase forward claps there can they bring him down in time out comes the rockets cool down luo getting called though Arteezy kept alive by a nice oh. decrepify but it seems the team fight might be too overwhelming from IG. Running down Zai. The Golem gonna assist him as well. They get a second kill. Two cores down, including Zai. That ends a mega kill streak, and they're not done just yet. Kuroki on the run has no TP, and Luo knows it. Drops the tombstone on the high ground, not gonna help him. In comes the spider. It's spider on zombie. Massacre in the jungle, but the zombies do add up here a bit. Now the death ward. They need it all to kill off secret. They get another. Chuan being surrounded. IG getting overrun. Man, they just can't deal with these. Zombies! Puppy getting chased back a bit further, and will limp away in the end, but my goodness. So many summons and minions and just chaos in these fights. <laughs> these fights are insane. The Ranger exit bottom takes a good amount of damage, did not go down in the end though. 
as the brute spiderlings were left behind as, as Luo TP did, decided to pick up a BKB and fight. So I like it better than the Orchid because it's a much better fighting game. You go with an Orchid, you're just going to die and melt. And he had Arteezy until Zai heroically got off that Berserker's call before the spawn spiderlings could come out. But when your axe can't fight a brute, that's a big problem because that BKB brute says, I don't need spiderlings. I'm just going to right click you down with the bonus damage from Insatiable Hunger, which got a decent buff in the recent, recent patch. Well, gods, we're not going to see Arteezy go into Necro Book. He picks up the Veil. They do have quite a bit of magic burst here, potentially from the Soul Rip, the Pugna Blast, and it feels more of like a, we have to win very soon item. They know the big ults aren't quote on something he can afford right now, rather than trying to complete the Necro 3, and I wonder if we see the same thing. Sure, they got thwarted a bit mid, but they may just go right back down. The worry is IG are going to have double BKB with both Queen of Pain and Brood, and once their ultis are back up, then yeah, it gets really bothersome, so... Seems they may be trying to fake out IG. They show Arteezy in S4 mid, and then they're looking to hunt. And hunt they shall. They're going to pop a dust that does clip Luo, but he runs to the position. north. He's got another web available, and he saw it coming. he'll just he was, walk away. He was positioned on the trees such that he can't really be seen unless they blink over where he is. I just get lucky and guess where They he would is. have to like run down the lane and then swoop back around, and yeah. you have to basically know where he is. Meanwhile, off near the Dire Secret Shop, we're going to have a bit of a clash here. The Veil comes out. They want to force out the 430 split, and if he doesn't, he may just drop to this. Oh, man, he that's a lot it. of magic burst, but they just can't finish the job quite. The fact he held onto it too really helps out IG. That was good. If play Secret from bait that ult out, then they five down mid yep. as soon as the brew ult's been used. But holding it means it's going to be tough for Secret. I love how the, just the animation alone was like, so you're like, oh, we're not getting the kill, he just ulti. But then he's like, oh, I'll just cancel it. Well, you run away? I don't know. Uh, he, he wins the game of chicken, basically. And now they're ready to fight mid lane. Faith picks up a Midas, so he's confident that IG can hold and that he wants to build towards the late game with this pickup, but also build towards that level 11 Chaos offering, which gets so much stronger at level 2. I think that's really the big thing here with the Midas pickup, is that no items he can buy really help his team that much. Even like a mech or something is like only so-so. Having a level 2 ultimate is the best thing in the world for a Warlock. Uh, this is what you want against the Pugna Ward. Something that can go in and just snipe the ward without committing a hero and... They have it with the Spiderlings, the Spiderites. They're able to just strut up to it. They slowly plank it down, even after the Decrepify. Eventually it falls, and they're holding this lane off, guys. But they have shown their Brood in the mid lane, which really means Secret has no reason to back. As long as they see this Brood here, they're not worried about the split At the push. same time, can they break through IG? It really feels like IG, if they execute decently with their big teamfight ultimates, I don't think Secret can break high ground. It, it feels like one of those games where Secret has to bait out the ults or just... If not, like, completely juke them, at least make the ult not very effective. If you get four or five hero rocked, like last time, you're backing off. The other thing, really interesting thing with these two drafts is neither team has a good draft to take Roshan. So neither team can really look to sneak it or even seek in secret position just go for a five-man Roshan. It's not going to work too easily or too quickly. But nice, slow, and steady siege as Arteezy will beat down that mid-tower. This is Pugna Dota at its finest. This hero excels at these chip battles and just daring IG to come in and actually fight. As long as they sit back, we'll continue this. They call to kill off the spider leads again, and now Bernie makes his move. He jumps right into the death ward, takes a lot of heavy damage off the bat, but meanwhile, Chuan's going to work on the backside of the fight. S4 will fall to Luo, BKB, and they just can't deal with him. Now the Queen of Pedal. Zai calls nothing, basically, the tombstone down, and Zai will fall as well. IG able to hold the line. Arteezy looks to turn this one, but Luo just too tanky. Now with Polder coming out, follow ups there. Pandas and spiders working together to bring down Skip. Skeletons and Bambi. Puppy should be next. Three dead. They'll look last but not least for the deer. And it seems they may find him. Another crit. Puppy unable to survive. Still the Warlock outgoing. That Golem doing some heavy lifting. And five dead. IG. They clean up all the creeps, the tombstone, the ward. And Secret just lost every ounce of momentum they had in this game. The axe has, as soon as the axe blink calls to save the, the nether ward, IG just, they go in. They're like, okay, there's no blink call. Our BKBs cannot be counted. And that's where the brew with a BKB is like guaranteed to get kills to be able to deal with the nether ward. Similar story for Queen of Pain. Burning actually blinked in and took a lot of damage quickly. I think Puppy maybe could have killed him, but wasn't using the Impetus through BKB. Either way, it was a tough fight for Secret to take. It feels like they have to get a blink call catch on heroes if they want to be able to fight IG. And once you use it to save the nether ward there, IG ready to jump. IG grab the Aegis. And with that, a whole lot of momentum in this game. The ults are on cooldown, and that's where Zai looks to make his move. 
jump in quickly on the Lua. The Tenth Ward coming out from the high ground. It's Chuan who just stands and delivers. They also have the slow going for the Warlock. It's a full duration Death Lord. Somebody stop this man. They can. And Secret still try to fight their way through a troll trap of burning. But he's got the Aegis. How the hell is Chuan still alive? Healing his teammates. Getting zapped endlessly. Doesn't even care. Another jump forward. Looking again for the Pugna. And they'll find him it seems. Luo just continues pursuit. Nobody dying for IG. In the end, they all survive. They bring down Kuro last, but not least, double team wipe. Oh my god. Team wipe into team wipe. The Warlock pick is just insane. Five heroes just slow to a standstill. They cannot move outside of the upheaval. It has just been insanely powerful. You combine the upheaval with Death Ward. It sets up a beautiful Sonic Wave. If you need. They didn't even have Sonic Wave that fight. They didn't even have Split that fight. It was just purely the Queen of Pain having two lives that Secret couldn't deal with. I think Zai getting a bit ambitious with the Blink call in and they got punished. The lack of disable on this Secret side against a hero like a Witch Doctor means you really have to be careful about choosing team fights. I mean, at this point, if you're secret gods, what do you do? Do you just beat your head against the brick wall that is walking down mid? Do you try to farm for a late game that doesn't seem to be there? Well, now what is not the, the time plan? to push. I don't even know if now's the time to push. You've got all your ulties. We that was without the, the full combo. The analyst said, okay, the IG are very ulti dependent. Absolutely. But when they can get a team wipe without a single of their three big ultimates being used, I guess the Witch Doctor ultimate, the one that they did have available that fight. That is very worrisome for Secret. Oh, the Imps come out. They do find Chuan. A much-needed pick could be on the horizon for Secret. And they will waste no time in they need to feed decapitating more of those. him. <laughs> that one pickup not going to be enough on its own, that's for sure. Yeah, kind of a, a cocky movement from Chuan, just roaming into the enemy jungle on his own. Didn't have the best vision, but uh, something that IG feel like they can get away with. Even with that death, still they have the top three heroes in net worth. And I got to point out Luo. He got a Midas Gods, but... This has been a team fighting broodmother who's actually oh, yeah. done a lot of work. Not something you see very often. I guess with some of the buffs, the 6.84 six buffs. He's 6 1 and 10. 16 kill participation out of 22 on a brood. And it's not just being like the sit back, throw your nukes like your spawn spiralings, go for a dagger. No, this has been run in, BKB, and man fight. He now picks up a Daedalus to go with this. He's ready to go, and he can even build a captain by no longer an orb effect means he can go for items. Oh, they're making orb the effects. move in now. They found S4, but no stun. So make his way out. Possibly a basher pickup. Even AC could be fantastic for Lua to just give that bonus armor and attack speed, which he's kind of missing here, especially in the attack speed department. IG comfortable just to slow the game down. Seems Secret feel like they, they kind of have to. You, you could see they really wanted to just force IG into a defensive posture for the remainder of the game. Uh-oh, Arteezy. He's been caught top. He's going to pop the ultimate. Bernie will just walk away as a haste turn active. And well, nothing really lost there. As High fights Faith in the woods. Tries for the TP out. Where's that chop? He gets him. Another big jam from Zai. He has been the one man keeping them in this game. He's scared, yeah, TP out from Burning. Actually, goes oh, for the call. Zai looking to turn this one around. He tried to TP out, but Burning gets caught by the call. This haste turn's about to wear off, and they're looking to surround him a bit more. They have a ward, though, that sees S4. Burning, blink back the haste turn. Only no now expires. Call, yeah. How timely for Burning. Yeah, Played yeah. that one just right. It was mana for a call, or Viper was in the perfect position that he got blinked on top of. It looked like it could have been a super next level bait on the Queen of Pain, where you yeah. TP out, she blinks in to go on you, and then all of a sudden the whole team shows up, but they're just a little bit uh -oh. too slow to make that play. Brute's back bottom lane. Arteezy can't stop this on his own. There's a BKB on this brute with a Daedalus as well, and he's just going to go in. He decrepified the enemy brute, and now will glimmer away, but look at the crits from Luo. He just crushes his way through one. This is one ugly spider. Hasn't no taken detection. the Rex, though. He's just yeah, gonna have to walk away and just a range rack. But another kill, and he's not done just yet. 430 walks in, they've got the brew split ready. The rock is online, but Warlock isn't here. He's back in the top side of the map, Soto is burning. And it seems Secret will at least stave off the inevitable for now. By the way, Warlock saved up a lot of money. I, I, about to say, I saw Faith earlier with like 3.7k. He spent some of it. Oh boy, this is he's trouble. Massive. This is 27 minutes in, he's also level 13 is the other big thing here. We could be looking at a level 3 Axe upgraded Chaotic offering in no time at all. It, it really feels like the, the Visage that we saw in the past two games, where it's like basically a carry. Not quite as farm, but with the ult online, you just do so much. Yeah, and that's definitely been a big trend in 6.84. Getting your supports farmed, 
is a great recipe for success. It so often leads to your support to be able to do a lot more in a team fight should one of your cores get shut down or initiated. If someone like Bernie gets jumped and picked off to start a fight, if you've got a Witch Doctor who can get a full duration ulti off a Warlock with an Accept, it suddenly doesn't matter if you lose someone like Queen of Pain or the Brood at the very start of a fight if your opponents overcommit and throw too many spells on that one hero. IG mate, looking for what could be that knockout blow. Chuan, when he went for his aggressive move earlier, he actually dropped a ward, which is now giving them a bit of vision on Secret. May allow them to catch S4 out. Not sure if he actually has buyback available. He oh, could they, be caught. It, the smoke they blink the wrong way. Yeah. Still keep on going, though. They just, I mean, they can backdoor the range back if they want. I don't know if they really need to kill. Much, I think they yeah. could just walk into the high ground, I think they honestly. want to pick off, but they may just take this range, Rex. They're going to try for it. Nice positioning here from 430. <laughs> Ninja Brew into the front lines. He's found Arteezy in the trees. He spots up the ward as well. Is he going to make a go? They lose the range, Rex. And, well, he may just throw Kuro up in the arrow side. I think he's looking stone. for that 2-3 hero clap and then immediately just go straight on the Rex. Is he going to find it? 430 patience from him as Burning initiates BKB popped by everyone. Zai so looking for the call and oh, Arteezy. Easy. He just mounts to this. He tries to glimmer away. He life tries to turn it. He's not dead at the Fallon just yet. Do they stun him or kill him off? No. They're just trying to lock the other heroes down. Soul Rift, not enough. They will fall. S4 gonna drop suddenly three cores. Actually, two. Bite the dust along with the Undying. And now looking onto the melee racks. But the Bruce Blitz gonna end fairly soon. Arteezy still alive through this. And 430 maybe forced back a little bit here. The Golem's about to wear off. They're losing their momentum. Look at the damage coming out from that life drain. And they'll chop down board. 30. A 3 for 3 with a buyback on Secret. Huh. And honestly, a great hold from them and Gods. Meanwhile, mid, Range Rex is about to drop for huh. IG. Very, very odd fight from IG and a few things. Like, they didn't wait for the Ag Scepter on Fate. They, they dove they, Arteezy really far, but didn't yeah. focus him with a boulder toss. I feel like 430 just needed to go, like, throw an ultimate up and just start cycloning and bouldering people while your team take Rex. He didn't even have to set up a good team fight. He just had to set up, create space for his team to take the Rex. I feel like almost 430 waited too long to use the clap ultimate. He waited for Burning to blink in, and Burning, once he blinked in, got hit by a Viper Strike, the Enchantress and Pettis. Burning died very quickly despite this tanky build. BKB, drums, double ulti OP that he's gone for. And they really didn't do that much to focus the Rax either. It seemed like they could have maybe just zoned two, three heroes back and just kill off the melee, but they, they did chase more for kills. Yeah, Viper was the big hero of that fight, doing a lot of damage, him and Puppy doing the most damage on the secret side. And they were they didn't have to deal with the Bruma, so that's the thing. These are heroes you ideally want to be kind of cycloning up in the air, especially Viper, because of how pesky and tanky he is. Well, we used to see this a lot back when the Warlock was in vogue. The Diffusal Blade being oh, picked up. it's on the side of the Warlock, though. Oh, sorry, that it's is actually... Yeah. Yeah, it's you can, you can use Good for the Pugna. He tries to decrep, and oh, yeah. you just purge that off and immediately go on him. So, honestly, Diffusal Blade would not be a terrible pickup for secret, though. And you get the mana break on Brood now as well, with uh, the bite not being... It's not an orb of well, orb, yeah. Uh, attack modifier, yeah. All right, we'll see. I mean, Luo is just gigantic. <laughs> He's got 8k net worth more than the enemy Pugna. This is one of the fattest spiders you'll ever see. Well, I think IG may have their eyes on Roshan after that failed high ground attempt, but they've got to wait for it to respawn first. Well, what does Secret do now, gods? They mm. start to come back a little bit in this game, but it does feel like IG, if they coordinated a bit better, would have been much harder to stop. And now they do have the Warlock eggs. The Brood has completed Diffusal, so as an answer for the Decrepify. It, it seems like IG should be looking to take out that Lena Rex. I think IG just wait for another item or two, wait for Roshan so they have Aegis on their side. And here comes one of the items, the Queen of Pain, Scotty now picked up. Uh, but elsewhere, there's no crazy big items. They, they want to take Roshan, control the map with the gem they've got, farm the enemy jungle, control their side of the map, and then it may even not be until they get something like an Assault Crest on 430's Brewmaster before they get a lane of Rex or a full lane of Rex, but they can play a waiting game. Their late game is looking a lot better now because of their lead. If they were on even terms, I'd say Secret has a comparable late game, but with a 15,000 gold advantage, IG can play this slowly if they choose to. Honestly, the big damage dealers are going to be Arteezy on the Pugna, who does insane damage with Veil Ags uh, and the Enchantress once she gets her own Ags. I, I feel IG really need to make sure they prioritize killing those heroes quickly in the fights. Yeah, Viper picked up an Ag Scepter himself, which is it's definitely nice to be able to use that on multiple heroes. But He feels like the one that like he, that I secret want IG to focus. Like the damage sponge while Arteezy is just sitting back and Veil Decrepify life trading people for half their HP. Yeah. So on the IG side, they've got the Ags on Faith, so the next objective is get the Witch Doctor Ags, which... I mean, outside of the Axe Cole, there's actually nothing to cancel it? Yeah. 
That's a problem for Secret. It, it, with nothing to cancel, because Axe is likely blink calling in on someone uh, like the Queen of Pain. They're not building a Hex. They're not building no a Yules, Yules yeah. I don't think. They're going to have to look to focus down Twine and kill him more than they are. It's, 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 he's going to have to be a high priority kill in these fights, especially once he gets that Axe Scepter. The good news is Zai does have a BKB, and there's really no way to stop him from jumping in with that. Yeah. So. Might be the solution to Chuan, but again, like, can you focus Chuan when there's the, the Golem mm -hmm. to worry about, the Bruce split coming out? All we know for now the is that both teams have slowed down a lot. And the other problem is, like, it's like Luo, he does so much damage right now. The Diffusal Blade gives him more agi, more damage, more attack speed, and he's just an absolute beast in these fights if left alone. That's what kind of happened last fight, except he wasn't focused on the main fight. He was kind of prioritizing too much, killing off this Pugna, who was just kind of kiting him around, and the Glimmer Cape as well. I feel like that Glimmer Cape saved Secret's life it multiple is. times this game. That's the second time it saved Arteezy on Pugna. Yeah, it is a massive value item for it's what it gives you. And right now it's 430 holding the gem. I wonder if they'd even consider giving that. To I guess 430 was on the back lines last fight, so if he had the gem in that fight, it could have been, it could have worked. I mean, you look at the way IG's itemizing. Bernie goes into an Eye of Scotty. Luo did not go for the Necro Bulk or the Orchid. He went into more of a hard carry brood, as you mentioned, with the Daedalus. The Diffusal, so he has a counter for Decrepify, and... I mean, it feels like the way IG is itemizing, they, they feel this might go late and they want to be prepared for that late game. We're not seeing items like Hex that just let you end the game a bit quicker with a pickoff. They are focusing on right-click, physical damage, ensuring they can kill off the Tombstone, they can just fight their way through any of Secret's counter-initiation and... It, it seems like they are prepared for an hour-long game, basically. Yeah. The other crazy thing is normally you see a Brood at this stage, like, okay, Brood's got 20k net worth, highest rate hero, 12k, 13, 14k. In this case, it's 12k, which is really far behind. But you say it's still just a Brood. It's gone for, like, a Dagon 5e I, blade. And, I don't know okay, about that this game. <laughs> exactly. This game, no. This is the main carry on the IG side. Luo. It's the main carry in the game, it feels yeah. like. Unless they Viper Strike call it. Like, then they may be able to kill him, but... You put, he's just not getting focused. You put a butterfly on him, you put an assault crest on him, you, whatever you, you want, and he's not going to get kited by Decrypt now that he's got BKB and Diffusal Blade. And Arteezy bottom lane, good luck, my friend. Well, not sure what the plan will be. Quick purge, but he's trying to man fight his way through this one. The, continuing to go as Luo, slowly <laughs> getting him worked down. Arteezy, look at the life drain, but for now survives. Now the golems come, and they look to finish him off. Out comes the Viper Strike, in comes 430. They'll bring down Arteezy, but they have to commit it's a lot for this one. Zai with a great call. On to three, the golems about to drop, and now comes Twine. Death Ward a bouncing, doing massive damage. Kuroki next. That's going to be three dead buyback from our tour. Meanwhile, Zai trying to retreat out. He will drop as well. It's four dead, including the buyback. And that's four. The last man said he just deals with the Aegis, but that's it. He's left alone. Another Viper Strike won't matter. Down he goes to five dead, plus the buyback on RTZ. He'll be in second buyback, but they got nothing, guys. You can't fight into up. If you fight into the IG team, you have to fully commit because upheaval means you're not running. This is a fight you're fully committed to once you take it. And that's a few. Blade, just making oh. life so damn hard for Arteezy with a crit. He just gets run over. Now it's the Viper getting kited. Scotty's there. Double die back IG. About to make this a 2-1 series, gods. GG. Well played indeed. Well. Luo on the Brood had an incredible performance and showed a new different way this hero can kind of be played. Normally it's just the space creator. This time around he started off that way, but he was the key piece as far as defending against the five-man secret push. He came up big and then late game, oh man, he was just... They had